Okay, this sermon is entitled, Why Fruit Doesn't Prove That Someone Is Saved. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 147 reads, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doeth build up Jerusalem, he gathereth together the outcast of Israel, he healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. Now, when it comes to false prophets, a lot of these people are what you would call a fruit inspector, and a fruit inspector is somebody who looks to a person's outward or ostensible appearance or behavior to try to determine whether they're saved or not. Their favorite verse is found in Matthew chapter 7. In verse 20, it reads, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, this verse is not talking about a person's behavior. It's talking about their teachings. And it's how to identify a false prophet. If a person's preaching the true gospel of grace, that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and rose again, and that the only condition for salvation is to simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And once you're saved, you're always saved. That person is producing good fruit, according to the scripture. If a person's teaching a false gospel, like Roy's, repent of your sins, or Calvinism, Arminianism, or lordship, damnation, then that person is a false prophet with rotten fruit, and that's how you can identify them, It's based on what they teach. But see, the false prophet believes this to mean you'll know a person by how they live. That's the fruit they're talking about. And in my notes, I have seven reasons why you can't go by this. Number one, there's fake fruit. There are people out there that appear to be exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit as found in Galatians chapter 5, but they're faking it all the way. They're putting on a front and bearing synthetic fruit Number two, nobody has an answer as to how much fruit is necessary. And what these fruit inspectors will say is that it doesn't matter how much fruit as long as they're evincing some amount of fruit. So I guess according to this standard, you could be a serial killer and as long as you manifest two seconds of fruit a day, you're good to go. The third reason why you can't go by fruit to determine if someone is saved is because there are seasons of unfruitfulness, a.k.a. barrenness or infertility, and if you're going to judge somebody by their fruit, you would either have to completely overlook this or only make an assessment when a person is in a season of fruitfulness. Number four, even if you used Galatians chapter 5 as a paradigm, the amount or types of fruit is man-decided and completely subjective. I mean, how much joy does a person have to exhibit before you determine them saved, based on this man-made criterion? Number five, any unbeliever can have the fruit mentioned in Galatians 5. I mean, unbelievers can be peaceful, an atheist can be kind, gentle, and possess self-control, and this wouldn't prove anything. Number six, the Holy Spirit can be grieved, whereupon no fruit would be seen during that time period. And then finally, number seven, insisting that fruit is absolutely necessary to prove one is saved totally discredits and even supersedes the work of the cross and is a tacit affirmation that Jesus is not enough for salvation. It also points man to self and not Christ alone. And logically, if a person has to have fruit to know they're saved, then faith in Christ was also not enough. And I believe people that have always held to this view are probably not saved at all. Because at the end of the day, they're looking to their self instead of Jesus Christ as the means of their salvation. So, what's the solution to this problem of claiming that you'll know people by their fruit? Well, it's simple. It's you'll know them by their faith. And obviously, faith cannot be seen by the naked eye. It can't be detected by a visual inspection So all you can go by is a person's profession. If they claim they have believed on Christ, they've trusted him alone for everlasting life, then that's good enough. And in that case, all the fruit in the world isn't going to prove anything. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. 
bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen.